everyone and welcome to Shelby the McCaw's YouTube channel. This is our first ever video and at this point of filming I don't actually have Shelby in. <laughs> My name's Carly, I will be Shelby's owner, her main flock, well head of flock I guess. Um, I, myself, my partner Dan and our four children will be bringing Shelby home in a few weeks time when Shelby is old enough and when she's been fully weaned. Shelby is currently with her breeder. She is currently being weaned and we're waiting to her natural fledgling age, the age at which she will start trying to fly on her own. Uh, and when she's fully weaned and trying to fly and flying, then she will be coming home to us, which is so exciting. But I thought I would start this video to explain how to prepare for bringing a new baby blue and gold macaw home. Um, we have not entered into this lightly at all. I've been planning and preparing to bring home a blue and gold macaw for 10 years. Um, so this is not something we have or I have decided to do overnight. I've wanted a, a macaw for as long as I can remember and 10 years ago I decided right I'm going to do it. And it has taken 10 years of research and waiting for the perfect moment. Um, and now we have finally reached that perfect moment and so that is how much preparation has gone into bringing Shelby home. So I am hoping that we are going to be providing her with the perfect home. Now I've done a lot of research and a lot of preparation to bring her home and that is part of the, prepara the preparation for bringing home a baby um, blue and gold macaw. Do as much research as you physically possibly can. This is not something you should be entering into overnight, waking up one morning and thinking, I want a macaw, I want a parrot. This is not something that should be entered into lightly and it's something that should involve the entire family and everybody who lives with you. Um, like I say, I've been planning this for 10 years and I've done a huge amount of research. I don't think any amount of... Um, like reading or watching training videos is going to be uh, anything like the real deal. It's, I mean, having her here is going to be so different to all the research I've done, but it does help and it is, it is making me feel a bit more confident about her bringing her here and knowing that we are going to be a good enough family for her. Um, so that is my number one tip is to do your research. And when I say research, I mean everything, how to, integrate a baby macaw into your family, how to integrate a macaw with other pets, how to start training, the very first thing you need to start training and in our household the first thing we're going to do is integrate clicker training, we're going to acclimatise her to a clicker um, and by doing, uh, the way we're going to do that, the way I'm going to do that is by pressing the clicker and giving her a treat and keep doing that until she realises that every time she clicks she'll get a treat and you wait for her to react to the clicker. So looking at our hands or bending down ready to take a treat, that sort of thing. Once she knows that clicker equals treat, then the real fun will begin and we will start training. So learning about how to clicker train, learning how to target train, learning how to step up. Those are the sort of first three things you really want to be looking at learning or teaching your bird. Um, so Alongside that, you want to be researching other things like what food what food to feed your new macaw. And I will do a video on diet and feeding and feeding times and how many meals a day we'll be giving our macaw. Um, but at the moment, you want to be researching the perfect food for her. Now, we have bought Tops um, organic high-end pellets for our parrot and I will throw a picture up here for you and link a description, uh, put a link in the description for you to take a look at where we got ours from. Um, so we'll be giving high-end organic pellets to her in the evenings and in the mornings for her breakfast we'll be giving her a mix of different vegetables. We will be reducing or not giving very much fruit, nuts or seeds because that shouldn't actually be part of their main diet, that shouldn't be what they eat throughout their meals. Seeds and nuts and fruit will be um, sort of for treats and training only. We may be putting the odd bit of fruit in foraging toys and we'll be re um, holding back anything she loves, especially in terms of fruit and seeds and nuts for training. Seeds and nuts for training, sorry. Um, the first thing we're going to need to do though when she comes home is work out what seeds and nuts she actually likes and there are ways to do that. 
Um, and again, I guess we'll be talking through how to do that as and when the time comes. As well as researching the perfect diet and food for her, you also need to research what is good and what is bad for a bird in the home. Things like burning candles, Teflon, um, saucepans and pans are a massive no-no. Leaving windows and doors open, you're gonna need to train your family to not leave windows and doors open, that is so bad. Um, if you have a bird that has n had no recall training, especially a baby bird. So I'm gonna have to be training the four children not to be leaving the door and windows open uh, for when she gets here. Um, <clears throat> Things like candles and stuff, I mean, I've got a Bath and Body Works candle there. All of those things will be taken away, which makes me want to cry, but I'd rather that than the uh, die instantly from toxic poisoning. Um, alongside what, learning what is toxic for parrots, I've also learned the anatomy of parrots. Now, you don't have to be like me. I learn the living crap out of everything. I have to know everything about everything. I'm one of those people that when I get something in my head, something new, I, I'm not, I like to know everything about it and I research everything. I'm someone that loves to learn. And so I learnt the anatomy of a parrot and they obviously have two lungs like most other animals do, but they also have six air sacs which act as other lungs, um, which means oxygen is so efficient within their bodies. It travels around their bodies extremely quickly, extremely efficiently um, and therefore anything toxic in the air that goes into their body passes into their bloodstream in high quantities in high dosages very quickly which is why burning te teflon cooking with teflon candles um anything smelly like surface sprays air room sprays aerosols anything like that can be so highly toxic to your bird you shouldn't be cooking in the room with your bird anyway. You shouldn't have your bird in the kitchen whilst you are cooking because if they fly at the oven or whatever whilst you're cooking, their feathers are extremely flammable. They will just go up in a big puff of fireball <laughs> and you really don't want that. So you shouldn't be cooking anyway with your bird in the room. But even more so if you only have Teflon things, all the windows should be open. Your bird should be absolutely nowhere near the kitchen at all. I mean, upstairs in a, an aerated room itself is preferable but the most preferable thing is to just not use teflon products um, and use stainless steel cooking products only even things like i'm a, quite a spiritual person so i like to burn incense and sage and things like that they are no-nos they are you just can't do it anymore um so unfortunately we will have to do a big change a big lifestyle change this isn't like bringing a kitten home this is it is a toddler. This is a almost the intelligence of a seven-year-old, the emotional intelligence of a three-year-old. You you have got a toddler for life. So um, that brings me on to the next tip on preparing for your parrot to come home, a baby parrot to come home. You need to understand that this bird could live up to 80 years. That is most likely going to outlive you if you're an adult buying this bird. Um, so you need to be able to say where this bird is going to be going once you pass away, once your family members pass away, and what is going to happen to the bird. And that more than likely means putting the bird into your will. Um, anyone that is organised should have a will uh, made. I have a will, I have life insurance, I have all of those things in place. Um, the bird is not yet in my will because she's not here yet, but when she gets here, she will be put straight into my will. Um, you cannot just assume either that your, your children will take the bird, because as they get older, they may not want it. Um, they'll have their own lives as well, like my four-year-old, will already say oh, I want the bird I want the bird she's four though she may grow up and knowing her because she's a bit of a free spirit she'll travel the world and might not be here to take on a bird that is going to live even longer um so you need to be prepared for the commitment the lifestyle change and the length of time you're going to be having this bird in your life my next tip is considering where your bird is going to live and how they're going to live within your home are you going to keep them in an aviary in your garage are you going to keep them in a cage inside your home are you going to not have a cage are you going to have an outdoor aviary you need to think about how your bird will live and the best conditions for your bird so we have prepared greatly for our bird we have a sleeper cage inside my bedroom now I don't know how well that's going to work, having her sleep in the bedroom with us, but we're trialling it for the time being because it we bought quite a large cage, um, the biggest we could afford, which is also another thing you need to do. If you're going to get a cage, you need to buy the biggest cage you can possibly afford because these are not small birds. They need to be able to stretch their wings. Um, 
So we bought the biggest cage we could afford. The only place it could fit is in my bedroom. It could fit in the kitchen, but that is where the cat and dog sleep at night. And from the state of the kitchen every morning, and I mean dog hair everywhere, I guess that they get up in the night and have a play because they play with each other. They like rough house together. And I would rather the birds didn't have um, a disturbed night's sleep. So the bird will be sleeping in my bedroom. We have blackout curtains and blinds. And so the room is extremely dark. Um, but I'm just concerned about any noises that we make when we go up to bed or um, being in and out of the bedroom. Um, also in the summer, the sun comes out at five o'clock in the morning. I don't know how that's going to, I mean, even if a tiny bit of light cracks through the wind, uh, the curtains i don't know if that's going to wake the bird up and then therefore everyone <laughs> so we're just going to trial the um her in our bedroom for the time being we'll see how that goes but we have a very large cage and within that cage we have some really nice enrichment things some toys we have food bowls foraging toys um like mind toys i need to go get my dog one second Sorry about that. We intend for our bird's cage to be an enriching environment and somewhere that she will enjoy to be. Um, I know some people are, oh, I want my bird to be out of its cage for as long as possible, but actually it's more important that the time spent out of the cage is enriching and engaging rather than just out and about destroying your home. Um, the cage should not be a negative environment. Your bird should want to go back into its cage when it needs to. So you need a nice, spacious, clean, cage for somewhere for the bird to sleep but also enriching for daytimes and things like that i'm lucky enough to work at home so the bird won't be sort of locked up for 10 hours a day um but there will be periods when i need to put her back to go shopping and uh, even just to give her her own space and time because she's going to want that so a nice big cage we've almost nearly completed a outdoor aviary as well this is a huge aviary for one bird. We are lucky enough to live in a house where the garden is absolutely massive. It is 100 metres long um, and it is just huge. We obviously cannot net the entire length of the garden and I wouldn't want to anyway. So we have decided to build an outdoor aviary. I have started a building our aviary series on this channel already. So if you'd like to see how that is being made and for the start to completion um, videos, then please take a look at those videos. They were at this point in time, as if you're watching this when it's just come out, they are the only videos on this channel. So we are lucky enough to be able to build a large outdoor aviary. And this aviary is not for her to live in and it is not for her to sleep in. This is going to be sort of a training arena. We will be free flying our bird, Shelby. She will not be clipped at any point in her life and she will be free flying. Um, we live in a village, we live in a tiny little village and we are surrounded by hundreds of thousands, of, well not hundreds of thousands, but hundreds of miles of countryside. We have a field next to my house that is completely flat and open and no obstructions whatsoever. I think there's one tree about half a mile away. Other than that, it's the absolute perfect flying environment within a two minute walking distance of my front door. And so the outdoor aviary is going to be a desensitising and free flight training arena. Um, also something enriching, somewhere for her to have showers and somewhere to her, for her to spend time in the sun in the summer. Um, it gets a lot of sunlight. There is also, we're going to shade half of the aviary. So half of the aviary is in shade, half of it is in sunlight. So she can pick and choose how she wants to spend her time. And it's also going to be rammed full of enriching toys and things that she will love um we again are lucky enough to our garden is full of trees um we have sycamore trees which are parrot safe so we have made lots of um so i was i'm recording on my phone i was just reading a message <laughs> we have made lots of toys and i'll get onto that in a second but yes um i'll chuck up some pictures here of the before and after of the avery um and yeah it's how long is it? It's four metres, four and a half metres by two and a half metres. We're actually building it from scratch. We have not bought a aviary with instructions. We have sat, written out the plans and the blueprints, worked out how much materials and what materials we need exactly, gone out and bought all of the individual materials and started building this thing from scratch, me and my partner. Um, and it has been tough. My hands are in pieces, they're dry and... Um, just horrible it hurts and i'm covered in bruises but 
it is all so worth it because I really do feel so so lucky to be able to give her that so she's a lucky parrot so that's another thing you need to consider her space her own personal space how safe is your home where is she going to sleep where is she going to train where is she going to spend her time in your home I suppose the other thing you need to go into con you need to go you need to go in to con you need to go you'll need to consider I suppose the other thing you'll need to consider is whether she is going to or whether your bird is going to free fly are you going to clip your bird are you going to free fly your bird um wing clipping is controversial to say the least I'm quite open in saying that I don't believe birds should be clipped if you want a bird or if you want a pet that doesn't fly you don't get a bird um it's really as simple as that you get a dog or a cat or something that just does not fly you do not buy a bird and then cut off its main wings wing feathers in the hopes that it won't fly because that is actually their natural way of traveling and in fact wing clipping doesn't guarantee the bird will never fly anyway it just makes it more difficult for the bird they can still fly so yeah you need to consider that and uh, how your bird is going to live the next thing i would consider is making sure that you have within your home toys and um enriching activities for your bird to participate in when it gets here um, we have decided we have bought some toys um, you I'll throw up some clips of our cage and there are some toys in there there are some foraging toys and um, we've got a ladder there in the aviary we've got a giant climbing rope that is actually meant for playgrounds but we're using it for the bird we've bought a massive long uh, like single rope that again is for climbing and exercise one of those things that fitness people do that too and um, we've bought that for the aviary um, but we've also made our own toys. We've made lots and lots of toys. We've made a swing that will go in the aviary. We've made foraging toys. We've made toys that can be just destroyed by the bird, all using the sycamore tree that's in our garden. Um, and again, sycamore is safe for parrots. So we are lucky enough to be able to do that um, without getting into trouble by cutting whole branches down from uh, wildlife parks. So yeah, we have a lot of things to ready for our bird for when she gets here to get involved in get stuck into another thing that i have personally done to prepare for bringing the baby bird home is to um read this book which is blue and gold macaws the complete owner's guide on how to care for blue and gold macaws this was a really good book it was really interesting i learned quite a lot from it uh things like how to clip um and deal with their talons and claws uh things that are safe how to place their cages because it's actually very distressing if your cage is placed in the middle of a busy room they like them to be tucked away in a corner or somewhere that makes them feel safe um i also learned about things like common health issues diseases weight issues asthma um and all sorts of various things like that um flight recall training lots and lots of things the best cages to have there's so much stuff in here and it's not that huge a book it is literally a condensed down version of everything you could possibly need to think about before you get your bird so i highly recommend this and i got this on amazon the next thing i think any new perspective or perspective uh baby bird macaw owner should be considering is insurance and vet care these are two things you're going to need to consider before your bird gets here so that when your bird arrives you are ready to put into action everything you need the best thing to do before your bird gets to you is research the best avian vet near you unfortunately i think the nearest avian vet to me is 30 miles away um but she has been recommended to me as an exotic animals vet that is very good um so she um shelby will be signed up to that particular vet because i'd rather her go to someone that is specialized in caring for her than um just a random vet down the road um i also have a cat and a dog they are with uh the pets at home vet um but shelby obviously she's going to need specialized um care and someone that really knows a lot about pets um, we also need to, or we also have researched insurance because you're going to need to insure your bird. There are various ins pet insurances that will insure a macaw. Um, some, like your standard um, vet 
or, or pet insurance companies like Argos, things like that, they don't actually insure um, macaws and parrots and exotic animals. So you will need to search a little bit wider afield and it may be that you use an insurance company you've never heard of before. But again, make sure you get your recommendations and read your reviews and all of the small print before insuring your macaw um, with an insurance company that you've never heard of before. Another thing that we've had to consider and think about is perches. Um, I know this might come under sort of the environment in which your bird is coming home to live in, but we don't want the bird to be sort of perching on top of doors and stuff. I know that it may be a case that at first we might not be able to control that and there are going to be times when she'll probably try and perch on doors but we have already started thinking about how we're going to train her off of that and we are going to be placing perches around every single room in the house so that there are places for her to sit and spend time if that is where she wants to be and that is where we are at the time we're also going to have very specific training purchase perches and we're going to be making these using tripods and again sycamore branches or um, just plain untreated wood. Um, it's really important that your bird perches on various widths of wood and surface. If everything is exactly the same and you find this with macaws and birds that have spent most of their lives stuck in one cage, that they can develop leg and feet problems if they've sat on one perch that is one width for, their, for a majority of their lives. So they need to be landing on surfaces and perching on surfaces that are all sorts of different sizes and widths. So we have taken that into consideration. We have, for our aviary, we have uh, some huge perches that are sort of five inches wide to some smaller perches. Um, and the training perches vary. They're going to be slightly plainer so that they're less of a distraction whilst we're training. Um, but again, they'll vary in widths. And you need plenty of perches, perches around the home for your bird to land on obviously they that is their main surface their their claws are too forward too backwards facing and so it's easier for them to sort of grip around something than it is to walk flat foot which is why they sort of waddle uh when they're on the ground um so perches around the home is something really important especially a training perch we'll also be doing a litter perch or a sort of a potty training perch um and we will be filming our attempts at potty training her um on one particular perch um which i'm told is possible and we have some techniques in mind for that i think the last thing i'd like to discuss in this video for how to prepare for bringing your macaw home is how you're going to get her home we have a harness and it is an aviator harness we bought this on amazon we're going to hopefully attempt to put this on her at the breeder's home and then we're going to place her in a carrier now we have actually just got a standard pet carrier that we've used for our cat in the past but it is plastic and we're hoping it will survive this one journey but from there we'll be getting a metal cage something that if we're planning on taking her places which we are we're planning on taking her away and on holidays and trips and flying trips and things like that she's going to need something a little bit more sturdy but for this one particular journey getting her from the breeder to our home which is about an hour's journey we're going to be using a standard pet carrier that our cat has used in the past um for you, that may be also similar. You may just need a normal pet carrier. Um, but if you're planning on taking her around or traveling with her in the future, your bird in the future, then something more sturdy, you're going to need something more sturdy, something metal, but obviously a safe metal. So a stainless steel pet cage, something like that, a travel cage. Again, it doesn't have to be massive, but enough space for the bird to be able to maneuver around. Um, and if you're having breaks throughout your trips and stuff, your bird will need to stretch their wings eventually. Um, so this isn't the sort of cage you would want to keep your bird in at any for any prolonged period of time. But you are going to need something safe and secure to get your bird from A to B in the car in. So that is really the majority of the things we have considered before bringing Shelby home. There's so much more. Um, if you think of anything that you would like to add, please drop it down in the comments. How did you prepare to bring your baby macaw home? Or are you planning on bringing a macaw home? If so, what are you doing to prepare yourselves and your family? I would love to know. And we will be back very soon, hopefully with Shelby here in our home to show you. But in the meantime, keep an eye on this channel and take a good watch of us building our Avery, which is quite fun and enjoyable. And we will see you very soon. Bye.